Floss Tube. I am Danielle and this is my channel, Love and Stitching. This is a channel about cross stitch. So if that's something that you're interested, in, I hope you will stick around and see what I have to share with you today. Today is February 29th, 2024, and this is Floss Tube number 40. Happy Leap Day to everyone. I'm always excited to have an extra day in the year. I know there's a lot of like Leap Day starts going on, so I'm excited to see um, what everyone's going to be starting today. Um, hopefully everyone will share those projects on Instagram so that we can follow along. Um, but yeah, I'm so excited to be back with you. It is the end of February, so this is going to be my February recap to kind of go over everything that I have worked on this month. And I do have some finishes, some fully finishes, which is amazing. Um, whips, a little bit of haul, and nothing like last time, uh, which is probably a good thing with market being this weekend because next month they'll, they'll, there will be more. Um, and then let's see, we've got um, the giveaways. I do want to go ahead and say a huge thank you to everyone for the comments on my last video. Um, for and I just want to take a minute in the beginning of the video. I'll do a little bit of more of the life update at the end, but just to say thank you for all the well wishes for my daughter's surgery. Everything went really well. It was the beginning of the month, so we are about three weeks post-op, um, and she is doing really well, getting back into a normal schedule. It was a difficult, um, couple, well, about a week and a half of recovery. Um, that was the most difficult. She still is still has some stitches, and so we've got to wait a little bit longer to. Um, fully released her into like a normal diet for a one-year-old. Um, but she's doing really well and we're just very thankful it is behind us and that we are moving forward and we've got some, you know, exciting things for her to be able to start learning to talk, um, therapies for that and learning to eat some new foods that she's not been able to try. So, but it just um, was very warming for this community. It's just amazing. So we are just so thankful for the well wishes and the prayers that went in um, to her and everything. And we definitely felt them. Um, the first night was very difficult, um, but we got through it. And so we're just very thankful. So thank you so much. Um, and I'm just thankful for this community and the support that we received. All right. So I want to go ahead and jump in. I do have um, technically four fully finished objects. So one of them you saw probably a year and a half ago. I know I was still pregnant. Um, this is a piece that we, or that I rescued and my husband actually helped me find it um, through we were at a estate sale locally and I had seen pictures and I thought this might be a cross stitch piece and so I wanted to go hunting for it and so we actually were able to find it in the basement where there are a lot of different things um, down there and my husband picked it out immediately after I had shown him the picture so that was very kind of him and it was you know 50% off that day because it was the last day of the estate sale so I only paid a couple dollars for it which breaks my heart but I'm glad that it's got a new home in my house. And so I haven't hadn't found a frame for it. It is an unusual size. It came with a mat, so I had to go online and I had found, um, I think it's arttoframe.com, I think is where I got it from. And they do um, custom frames. And so you can put in the size that you need and find the frames. And so I think this was like a 17 by 24 when I measured out the mat. So I'm gonna go ahead and share that with you. I don't know anything about it except for it's the Lord's Prayer. Um, it is stitched on like a blue Ada. It's very large, so I have to stand up for it. Um, so this is the piece. Um, it was stitched in 1991 by MCH. I really like the border and it's got gold in it. So I initially thought that I was gonna get like a, a gold um, frame, but I gold doesn't match metacore. I couldn't find one that I liked. Um, so in the end, I went with like just this really pretty black and uh, designed um, to go with it. And so you can see the stitching there and it's actually pretty well kept um, for having been stitched in 1991. There is a stitch in here that is coming off. So I need to figure out how I'm going to fix that. Um, so any suggestions, I'm open to suggestions, but that is that frame piece. So I'm very excited to get it put up on the wall. Um, it's huge. I do have another large prayer that I have shared in my introduction video. It is one that I stitched many years ago. Um, but it's a, it's a different, very different, um, piece. So I'm glad to have both of them and be able to put that one up. All right. My next fully finish is my piece that I finished last month. It is, um, Welcome or a Quaker Welcome by Lila Studio. I got it on Etsy. Um, all of the information on the changes that I made, like as far as the colors and things like that and the fabric um, 
because I don't remember all that right off the top of my head. It is all in my last video. So if you're interested, please check out um, floss tube number 40. But I was able to frame this one. So I did frame it myself. It ended up being, when I measured it, um, three quarters of an inch on both sides off from a standard size frame. So I think this is like a 12 by, what is this? 12 by 13, 10 by 13, sorry, 10 by 13 frame. And so I went to Hobby Lobby when they had their 50% off frames and they had a couple for me to choose from. And this is the one that I ultimately chose. So I really love just the rustic nature of it. I think it kind of goes with the Quaker theme. Um, and so... I got it for, so it was $32.99 and 50% off of that. So not too bad for framing. And then I did lace the back of it. Um, I took the glass out because I just, I didn't feel like it needed the glass. Um, and then I just was able to secure it easily. I don't think I would have been able to do that had I put the glass in there. There just wouldn't have been enough room. Um, and so I did lace it. My cousin, who has been on my videos um like two years ago, maybe she was on a video with me when we went camping. She used to frame for one of the big, big box stores several years ago. And so she actually taught me um, how to lace. And amazingly enough, I remembered. And I think I actually did not do too terrible of a job with lacing it and putting it in there. So um, it is very close to the border, but I'm perfectly fine with that and just love how it fits. And we've not hung it up yet. I am just excited. Like, I think I'm motivated to start framing some things because I have this wall that I want to put a bunch of um, just general decor on. So I'm excited to be kind of finishing some of these things that I can keep up all the time. And this is definitely one of them. So I just, I love it. I'm so excited to have it uh, ready to go up on our wall and just see it every day. So very excited for that one. All right, the next two fully finished actually kind of go together. So I, one of them I stitched last year. So it is the spring stitching seasons with Stitching with the Housewives. It was the club from Fat Quarter Shop that they did um, once a quarter. And so spring is actually the only one that I've stitched, but because I've got this one fully finished now, I'm motivated to start on summer. So that one might be getting started in March, we'll see. And then I did start a smaller piece. I used all of the same colors. So I went back to the spring piece, pulled all the colors that went with it. Um, so it is, the, the colors are a little bit changed from what the pattern calls for, but it's still kind of in the same theme. Um, so I'll show you them together and then I'll show you them individually. And so this is my finish. I think I had shared that I was going to finish it on this board when I actually finished it. Um, and then I finally just, you know, kind of got the motivation to finish it. So, um, I stitched everything with the call for colors on the fabric that was provided by Fat Quarter Shop. I did actually use the same color fabric for the backing, so it's Chelsea's Checks. It um, is not the piece that they sent with it because I could not find it. I since found it, but thankfully I ha already had like some of the check that I could go ahead and use with it. So what I did, um, and this is from the dollar spot at um, Target, and it's from like 2020 maybe? I don't know. It's an older piece. I've had it for a while. And it was a Halloween piece, but I just loved how it's got like this ledge that I can put it on. Um, I could technically hang it if I wanted to, but it'll probably go on a shelf. And then my idea was to fill it with like these pillows that go with it. And I'll show you in my whips the other pillows because I started another one last night to hopefully start filling in. I think I've got four. Um, and then this one I did stitch on a smaller count fabric. So it's a 36 count because I wanted it to be small enough to fit in here. Um, and then I'm going to probably do the same with the other seasons because I think they've got roundabouts that probably would fit, um, in here as well. So backed it with the fabric and then I just put rickrack, you know, across and then up and down to where it crossed and over here. And then in the corners, I felt like it needed something. So I just added these little embellishments as well. And then a little pillow right here. So like I said, the colors match. I'll show the pillow now separately. Um, and there is an issue with this pillow because I don't know if it's my iron. I don't know if um, it's my ironing board. So I need to be a lot more careful. But somehow the pillow got dirty, which is devastating. I was not happy. Thankfully, it's a small piece and not one of my bigger pieces, but still. So I did um, in the corner have to cover some of the stain or whatever it is because I've not been able to get it out. Um, and I thought it was okay because, I mean, that's really cute. And then I think I'm going to put some pins up here because you, you can kind of see a little bit of the staining up there. I don't know. It's okay. It's small. No one will probably care or notice except for me. Um, I did try the sewing the rickrack into the pillow like um, I think it was a tutorial by Primrose Cottage that I followed. 
No, it was not Primrose. Who was it? Nicole Spore, maybe? It may, I think it was hers that I followed. And as you can see, I'm not great at it, but it's okay. I will get better. Um, and then I did the, the method that she did in the back as well, where you cover, um, you, you cut it here and then sew it back up in a, I don't know my sewing terms very well, ladder stitch. And so I think I, I am going to get like a little tulip flower or something or other to put right there to cover it up. And then I've got my labels that are from Ever Emblem um, that I put on there as well. And I put it, I stuffed it with polyfill as well as a little bit of crushed walnuts just to give it that little weight to where it'll sit up. Um, and then I've used the same Chelsea's check on the back. So that's my little pillow. It took me like an hour to sew it because I'm slow and that's probably also why it's not perfect. I probably should have taken maybe a little bit more time and attention to it, but that's okay. Um, all right, so those are my fully finishes and I do have some finishes as well. Um, last time you saw me, I was working on my ornament um, for the end of the month to get four ornaments into January. And so this um, ornament is Peace by Hands on Design. It is in the 20, 20, no, 2015 issue of Just Cross Stitch Magazine, either the August one or the ornament -ish edition. Um, so I now have two of these. One was in the August -ish edition where they do like the preview and then this, the other one was in the actual ornament um, edition. So I did get this little guy finished up, so I'm excited to have him. He was ornament number four um, of the year. So I got my four done. I didn't get him done in January, but that's okay. Got him done in February, so he is at least completed. Um, stitched on 28 count black Monaco, I think. And then with the called for um, colors, and you can see like there's some gray swirlies in there that the colors kind of blend together a little bit, but that is him. And then I decided to start working on, um, I kind of pivoted a little bit from what my plans were. I didn't stitch any of the ornaments that I had planned for this month. And I only got two done. Yeah, only two done. Um, so I do have some catching up to do. But I decided to start working on some of the gifts because I do have a lot of gifts that I am planning to do this year. So for my teacher gifts, for my kids' teachers um, and the principal at their school, I usually do a sled ornament on perforated paper. I've used ones from, it's Fox Wood Crossings before, and Leslie Kate has some. And I think there's some others out there um, as well. So I've used some of those, but I wanted, we found uh, when we were doing like after Christmas shopping, we found some red truck type things as far as the theme. So I wanted to do a red truck with the Christmas tree theme for the, the teacher gifts this year. And I couldn't find any red truck pattern that was in, you know, one of those sizes. So instead I took patterns from um, images from the Stitching with the Housewives. So I took it from the Crate of Christmas Lights, which is a PDF, one of their um, tiered bit, tiered tray tidbits. And then Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas, which is a, I think it's a PDF, but it's also a pattern that you can purchase as well. So um, this is the first one that I've done. I've got five of them I need to do. And I think I want to do one for myself because I think it's turned out really, really cute. Um, so I just took the truck from the Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. I did the outline from one of the Foxwood Crossings. I did have to make it a little bit wider though to fit that truck in there. Um, so it's a little bit wider than a normal one, but the sleds that I get from Hobby Lobby, it shouldn't be an issue because they're usually my pieces are smaller than what the sled will fit. And then I took the lights from the crate of Christmas lights um, piece and then just did a blue background to fill it in. So this will get cut down and put on one of those. So I do have um, five more of those, five, four or five more of those to do as well. But that was a cute little finish to do. Um, for this next ornament that I finished, if you are related to me, so if you're a family member, don't look during this part because this is Christmas presents, um, unless you wanna be spoiled. So if you wanna be spoiled, then you know, that's your choice. But I found these patterns from Thread Milk Designs and I shipped them with one of my, um, purchases of thread I think that I needed and so this is one of them and I've got a couple other seats I'm going to do as well for gifts for Christmas and just make these into cute little pillows um pillow ornaments I think I just thought they'd be really cute so I do have a lot of family out in Colorado so I'm going to make Colorado ones for them and there's like five of those I think I need to make for the families so I did my first one 
And then I'll show you the other ones here in a minute. I've got the other states as well. So that is Colorado. I stitched it on this, I don't, I don't even know what it is. It was just in my stash. I think it's 28 or 30 count, probably 30 or 32. And I stitched it, um, I did use two over two for the stitching and I'm using um, Blacksmith Blue by Classic Color Works for this one. So I just found my own blue that I thought would work. And just these little rustic state pillows um, that I think are gonna be really cute. And I've got the other ones right here, so I will, since they're easily accessible, I will just grab them. So because I live in Tennessee, I'm gonna do Tennessee and I do have family in Tennessee. So again, spoiler alert. And then I've got family in Georgia. So I got these three ones. Um, Tennessee, I'll have to do a couple. Georgia, I only have to do one. So those are gonna be some gifts that will be um, coming up as well. Those are my ornament finishes for February. Um, I will try to pick up, I'm gonna pivot a little bit. I'll show that in my plans. Um, but I do wanna still do the, the two ornaments that I showed, or two of the ornaments that I showed last time. I still wanted to be able to finish them. All right, so for my main finish for February, um, this was my focus piece. It was a whip from April 2022, so almost two years it took me to finish it. I don't know why. It just did. Um, but I was really excited to pick this one up and finish it. This is another one that I'm going to frame. I have a frame picked out on Amazon. If I can't find one, I'm going to try to see what I can find at Hobby Lobby if there's um, a standard size frame. I think it'll fit an 11 by 13, I think is what I've decided, or something else. I can't remember. I, I've got it noted. Um, so hopefully this month, maybe I can get that one framed. I've got to go to Hobby Lobby for Easter shopping. So I figure that's a good time to look for a frame. Um, just make sure that they're 50% off. Look at the ads before I decide. So I did make some changes, nothing with the colors, um, but you will see there are goats here and there's a goat over here and I did not stitch those. Um, it's on 28 count. So I did actually purchase two strands of every um, fancy floss because I did not know what I was going to need extra of. Um, because I did not stitch it on the, I think it's 36 count that it was called for. So I knew I would need extra since I was doing two over two on 28. Um, in the future, I feel like I'll probably stitch these on smaller counts now that I am stitching on higher counts, however you want to say that. Um, but I stitched it. Do I have the sticker? Usually I keep the sticker. Oh, there it is. My son asked me why I keep the stickers on them. I'm like, because otherwise I don't know what the color is. It is 28 Count Legacy by Picture This Plus. So here, and it's big because, again, not only called for fabric. So there is the finish. I think I got this done February 21st, maybe somewhere around there. So that actually gave me a um, week to work on some other things at the end of the month, which was really nice. Um, so what I did there is a conversion out there, um, which I just followed loosely. I didn't um, ask for it necessarily, but I just kind of did the same idea as what the conversion is out there um, that's been charted by someone else on Instagram. And I, I can't remember the name. If I can find it, I'll put it in the notes below. Um, but essentially this crow came down and there's two extra flowers in here. Um, and there might be an extra bee in here too, I can't remember. And then I, I took this butterfly for over here if I can fold this up and I mirrored it so I took a picture of the pattern and flipped it in my phone to mirror it and then just kind of decided where it needed to fit up in there um this flower part is just gorgeous I love those colors um so I really enjoyed doing that when my daughter was in surgery I brought this with me and I just worked on that roof and that roof took me the whole time um because it's a big roof but that way my hands are busy, um, which kind of kept my mind off of things as I was a little stressed as I'm sure you can imagine um, a mother being when her daughter, who's only one, is in surgery. But um, then I continued working on it shortly after she got home and was um, had settled in after a couple days and um, kind of gotten better. So um, super happy to have that one done and just excited to be um, working on it again. All right, so those are all of my fully finishes. Finishes. I wanted to share. Do I have everything here? I have started teaching um, my six-year-old how to stitch, um, and he he's done a few things. He finished a frog pattern that was from like the Dollar Tree. 
that was on like plastic canvas. Um, I can't, I'm not sure entirely where it is, but he did finish that uh, with a lot of help. But then I found these um, stamped cross stitch on Amazon because he's been asking me to do some more. And this is um, the box that it came in and they are um, superheroes. So he loves superheroes. So this is the box and it's stamped cross stitch so he can know what colors to do. We, so he's finished one of them and it's very unfortunate we cannot find it. So I'm going to put a picture here of him holding it. So it was the Spider-Man one. It was the first one that he finished. Um, I've messaged his teacher at school trying to find it. I've messaged, like my mom's looked in her car because she picks him up some days from school. Um, we looked in our car. I've searched. My four-year-old has a tendency to put things in bags and hide it. She says she didn't, but I'm also recognizing she's four. Um, and then this could have happened a good week or two ago. So maybe she doesn't remember. So, um, we're going to continue to search our house and try to find it because I need his first cross stitch, but he has been working on another one. So I thought I would share that with you if I can find it. And this is the Thor pattern that he has been working on. He's actually gotten pretty far in it. So the kit came with all of the thread that he needs, all of the patterns on like 11 count Ada. I'd have to look. Um, and then this, so this is what they look like. And so it's got like the conversion here as far as what colors he needs. And then, um, what can I put behind it? Here we go. And then he just goes in and he fill, he color fills in. So he's working on like the face and the hands right now, I think. He's working on the face. And he's been doing this all by himself. The only thing that I do is I thread the needle and... I secure it in the back for him because he has trouble with that. So that's the only thing. And when we're driving in the car, um, my husband's driving and I'm stitching. Um, he likes to bring his stitching along and stitch with me. He always asks, do you have your scissors? Buddy, there's a pair of scissors that lives in this car in case a cross stitch bag does not have a pair of scissors that I bring with me. So yes, I always have scissors. No worries on that. Um, it came with um, set, like a needle threader and several needles. So I just gave him a little container to keep that in and then the thread in here the thread in here is a mess um, and I gave him one of my little Amazon project bags for him so he's just had a great time doing it and I'm excited to have a little cross stitch buddy um, stitching right along with me so I wanted to share that that's technically because he has a finish that I shared and then a whip that he's got going on so it goes right in between all of that um, all right so let's move into my whips um, we are going to start with I think we'll start with my temperature one because I did get it caught up yesterday. So this is Stitch and Mommy temperature turtles that I am working on. So you'll see this once a month. Um, it's on a blue, light blue fabric. I don't know, 28 count, I think. Um, I had, did find some, an error in my counting. So that's been fun to try to work on, through and figure out. Um, here. So I've got, it's folded. It's a bit, just a big piece of fabric. Doesn't mean it's unnecessarily big, but that's where I'm at. So I've got January and now February. I do need to stitch today, but since today is a leap year, the instruction said to change a little bit on the tail and then you're going to add the last day in on the tail. So I made that adjustment. Um, so it's definitely been warmer. We did have a little bit of cold in here today. It's cold, but cold in the morning, it'll be, it'll warm up. And then I will start in on March. And so I do need to though, start working on the outlines of the turtles down here because um, that will be April. So I need to get their, their bodies done. So I've got to work this way, which is what I do. Um, so yeah, it's been fun to keep up with that. I've, I'm not gonna lie, I've not kept up with it daily or even weekly. I think I did some catch up. I was like two weeks behind. And so I slowly started catching up and then because I had some extra time in the month, um, thankfully, I was able to um, just put some time into that and get it caught up um, last night or yesterday sometime. Anywho, this is in my So Much to Love bag, turtle bag that I love. Um, had to get that. This is going to be the So Much to Love project bag day because I've got a couple in my haul that I'm going to share with you as well. All right, so the next one, I need to pull up my tablet to share with you. This is another monthly piece that I'm working on. It is, well, it was, where is it? It was up here. The Mystery Sow with Fox and Rabbit. 
the next piece will come out tomorrow. So I actually had to, this is the, the mock-up of it, and everyone is kind of choosing their own colors. Um, it is Faith, Hope, and Love is the name of it, and it's a mystery such a long, it is going to be huge, 340 by 210. Um, so right now we're only a third, I would say, um, lengthwise or heightwise, and then half of what it's going to be widthwise. So I'm assuming there's going to be March and April here, and then we'll start going down and over and down and over for the next um, months. But that is the piece. And so what I have chosen, so I actually did not receive everything whoops, for my piece until um, the end of the month. So I had to catch up on two months this month. And again, it's not a piece of fabric that I have no idea what it is. I think it's a 30 count, but I'm stitching one over two and I'm using, um, let's share that. This is the one that I decided I was gonna splurge and use silks, which I've never used before. But because it's only one color I'm using for the variegation, um, and it called for like six skeins of it, I think, I felt like it was worth it. So I went through Hollis and Hands Creates um, on Etsy to purchase it. So this is the color that I'm using. It is night sky. And so it's got that purple, but also black. It's very variegated, which is what I wanted. Um, and I wanted like a purple with that black contrast as well. Um, okay. So here is where I'm at. So I'm actually all caught up. So that was exciting to get both months finished um, this month. So I really, really am enjoying stitching on this one. The motifs are just beautiful. It did take quite a bit of stitching to get this done. Um, it just did because that, that motif is actually really big. It's 70 by 70, but it's pretty detailed. Um, and I don't think I made any counting errors, which was a miracle. But I really love this one. The February month block took a lot less time, um, but I really enjoyed stitching this. It was just a lot of fun to stitch that one. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to see kind of what comes out tomorrow and what I'll be working on for March. And I'm excited to have a really big piece at the end of the year that I'll get to, um, this will be a framed one as well for my wall, um, put up. And so just seeing kind of how it progresses throughout the year and having that finish. So hopefully I will be able to keep up with it, um, and keep working on it. Okay, so I did have a birthday this past week. Thank you for all the birthday wishes on Instagram. It um, just made my day very special. And I decided to actually have a start. So again, I had finished my big piece. And so I just decided, you know, I've got some time. Let's spend a day or two on a new start. Something that I've wanted to um, start for a while. So this is was a Christmas present from my husband. It is Seasons of the Heart by Brenda Gervais. And I started in on summer because I wanted to give myself plenty of time to hopefully get it finished. And it's not a huge piece, so I don't feel like it'll take too terribly long. When I went through my fabric, I could not find a 36 count because I don't have a lot of 36 count. I'm going to start building that stash up. And that's, I think, where I'm leaning towards is stitching on 36 count, though I really enjoy 28 and 32 as well. So I'm still going to stitch on those. It's just when I can, I'd like to stitch on 36 for the bigger pieces, especially. Um, this is by no means a big piece though, but I found a 40 count light mocha that I had decided to try that would fit this piece. 40 count is no joke. Um, it is not my happy place. It, this may be the one and only time that I stitch on 40 count. And the reason is there's a mistake in here and I'm not fixing it. Um, I was chatting with someone on Instagram that made the same mistake and we both decided we're just on a different piece. We're just not gonna fix it. Um, but this is where I got. So I got the, the border done and I am not going to use the tags. I just continued the border all the way over. Um, and then I've got the grass and I'm starting to work on, I think it's a flower pot, um, the flower pot, but over here, there is supposed to be like one stitch between all of this. Instead, there is one and a half stitches because those holes are tiny and I accidentally made one of my stitches over here be one and a half instead of one. So then when I came over here, that moved everything half and half a stitch over. And I just, I had already done all of this. And I just decided I was not gonna rip all of that out on 40 count. I had to rip something out last night on 36 count and that was miserable, um, ripping it out. So I just decided I was not gonna rip it out. So instead I fixed it in here. So this part I did rip out because it wasn't very much, thankfully. 
So this is all correct now, but all of this is just going to be half an inch off or half a inch off, which it's not going to matter, I don't think. Um, and only I will know. Um, but I really do love this piece and I think it's doable to be able to work on it a little bit and get it done before summer. Um, I do want to make it into a pillow, but it may be a pillow where I recruit my mother to help me because this is a little bit bigger than the pillow that I messed up and I'd really like to um, have it look nice. So heads up to my mom. She might be helping me out. All right, the last whip that I've got as far as like what I worked on in February, I'm going to show some whips that are planned um, for March here in just a minute is bloom where you are planted. So this is going to go in as a little pillow, um, it, with my spring stitching seasons, uh, and the other one that I finished as well. So, um, I didn't have anything to work on last night. We were watching some TV, so I decided to go ahead and just pull this out. This is the bag that it's in. And I'm stitching it on, um, the same fabric that I stitched the other one on, which was, I don't think I told you, um, 36 count winter moon I don't know, maybe a picture of the plus. So I'm, I'm working out on a flower over here. So that's where I got to, and this will stitch up quick. Um, I think this fabric though, I'm only gonna have room for like one more. And I've got two more that I wanna stitch. So I'm, the other one I don't think will fit over there. So I'm gonna have to pick out another fabric. I do have like, this is a nine by 13, I think. So I've got smaller count pieces of 36 count fabric because I've been testing out fabric, but I don't have bigger pieces of it, which is kind of the problem. I need to, so that one, need, the other one needed the bigger piece. All right, so that's all of my whips. Okay, so let's go into plans. So I mentioned in last month, yeah, last month that my plans for 2024 are to have one focus piece that's a bigger piece that's a whip, um, except for January. January was a new start. Um, and when market comes out, there's going to be another new start. That'll probably be a focus piece, but the goal is to have some whips in there because I really want to be focusing on whips and getting them done this year. So because it is going to be, um, Easter at the end of January, the focus piece that I picked out was actually my new start last year. Maybe I think it was my new start for last year. And um, there, we did a stitch along, and I'm probably the only one who has not finished. And it's His Name is Jesus by Joyful Stitching. What does it say? Joyful Expressions. So it is a free pattern when you sign up for their newsletter. I think that it's a download. And there's so many different colorways that people have done. Um, I am doing a blue conversion, though. This was my Sunday stitch for a while, and then I just kind of fell off the bandwagon. Um, it's stitched on 27 count ivory linen, but I thought what better time to spend a month working on this one with Easter at the end of the month. Um, so this is where, let's see, let's see if that'll help. I don't have a board, like a big board. I've got a small one, but for these bigger pieces, it just would not work. This is where I'm at right now. Um, lots of words, so I don't think it'll take too long. I think I can probably get this one done in like a week or two for, by focusing it on. But the biggest part will be that center where um, it says his name is Jesus because that's a little bit more dense stitching. Everything else is just names. Um, so I don't think it'll be super difficult um, to get that one done. So I'm looking forward to kind of focusing in on that piece, working on 27 count fabric. It's a little bit bigger, able to see the holes. I think it'll go a lot faster. Once you start stitching on those higher count fabrics and you switch back to stitching on something that's a lower count fabric, it just is so smooth. Um, but I do love with 36 stitching with one strand. I do have to say that. Um, it's very nice. And the thread lasts a lot longer, so you're not switching it out as often um, if you're stitching like one color a lot. Um, but yeah, so I did pick out a couple other whips that if I get that one done that I might try to work on. I'm stitching a little bit ahead. So I do have like my spring pieces that are the little roundabouts that I want to work on. Um, and so those are some spring pieces, but I picked out some summer pieces because I also want to have some things that I can finish and add to my decor this year, hopefully. So this was a whip. Um, I have no idea when I started it, probably two years ago as well. So there are four of these seasons. I do have all four of them. This is the only one that I've started. So I'd like to get this little guy finished. Um, it is, I'm stitching it on 28 count coffee tea dyed Monaco. And that's what I've got so far. So I started on the roofs of the houses and the border. Um, so hopefully I can maybe put some work into this one and get him done. I don't think it'll take that long, um, but it's very pretty 
and I'm using probably most of the, the called for colors. Another one that I started, this was for Mania probably two years ago, um, was a Lizzie Kate. And I have done winter ABC, no, fall ABCs, um, but I've not done the other ones. So this was summer that I started. And this is again another one, um, 28 Count Coffee Tea Dyed Monaco. That was my go to. And I still do um, love stitching on that. I have a lot of it that have died, so I can work on it. Um, but I've only got, you know, the three letters. So I've got a ways to go, but I think um, it's probably. A a pretty quick stitch. I don't think this one will get done this year, but if I can get some progress on it, that would be great. The one that I want to get done um, is going to be the His Name is Jesus. And then as far as ornaments, um, I did have like the Lizzie Cates from last time that I wanted to work on. I may do another one for Colorado uh, or one of the teacher gifts just to kind of keep working on them since I've got multiples. Uh, but my son came into my craft room one day and I was asking him what pieces he might want me to stitch for him for Christmas. And so he has picked out, I have one that I'm going to, that I wanted to do for him. Um, and this is one that I want to do for him in Christmas colors. Um, so I showed him that and he liked it, but then he also was looking through my patterns that I had not like put away yet. And he came across the tiny modernist that was, um, that I got from the Jingle Ball in December. And so he has picked out um, Rudolph, Santa, and the Snowman. So I'm going to do those in individual um, ornaments for him. I think those would be really, really cute. And when I picked this out, I realized that there's a little like, red truck that I could have used, but I think that one was going to be too big. It wouldn't have fit. Um, I would have had to make everything a lot bigger. Um, so yeah, I'll probably try to work on some of his ornaments as well. So working on like my gifting ornaments and then as we get closer to Christmas starting to work on some of like the ornaments that'll be for like my tree that I'll, I'll do. Um, all right. So that's all my plans. So that is all of that. I do have a little bit of Paul and then the giveaways and then I'll do just like a brief life update. Um, so this is my last 32 count fabric of the month from Color and Cotton because I am switching over to 36 count to really start building that stash and get some bigger pieces of fabric. So I do get the quarter yard um, and this month it was Hail Bale Medium and it's a beautiful dark neutral. I love it. I think white will absolutely pop um, on that fabric and be great. So I do need to start stitching on some of my 32 counts because I think I was in the club for 32 count for like a year. So I've got a decent amount of stash filled up. Um, all right, so stash unloading. I got a couple things that I will share here. Um, this is Spring Bouquet Mill Hill collection and it's a little turtle. It's supposed to be a magnet, I think, and it comes with the beads and the floss um, and the perforated paper that you do it on. So I've never done a Mill Hill, but because I've been stitching on perforated paper for gifts for years, as well as our stocking holders, um, I'd really like to give this a try, even with like the beading and everything, um, because I just think he's so cute. So I did pick that up and I think it was just a couple dollars. Um, that was great. And then there was a lady selling some bags. And so there was a so much to love bag that um, was really reasonably repriced. And so I picked up this B1 and I love it. And I also, um, it came with the little thread bag um, as well. So super cute. So that's all my haul. Buckle up because once those uh, orders come in, though, for markets. Um, and speaking of, we are going to, a few of my friends and I are going to be doing a stitch along for, hopefully it'll be Americana April. We hope, we hope that everything will be um, in, in our hands by April 1st. I know shipping after market can take some time, so we're just, fingers crossed. But whenever we get it, we're going to be starting it. So it's the American Welcome by Plum Street Samplers. I've been waiting on that piece since it was shown last year, um, she opened up for some extra orders after because it was only to Patreon members. And then she opened some up and I was not logged in on time or, you know, I didn't see the post until after everything had sold out. And I was just, oh, so I was so excited that she was releasing it for market. So we are going to be um, stitching that. Uh, so stay tuned to seeing that one. Um, I did join because, you know, why not the So Much to Love's bag of the month club. Um, but I only did six months. So it's mine started in February because I wanted to be able to get December. Um, and I think some of the other months in there that I wanted to get as well. So I started in February. So if you have not gotten yours, um, this came like last week, end of last week, I think maybe beginning of this week. So hopefully it's not a spoiler. Um, 
But this is the um, February bag that she did. So February for hearts. As you can see, I really like her bags. Um, I love vinyl covers, but I'm starting to get more into the fabric color um, covered ones. And I want to make one. I've got fabric picked out, so hopefully this month I can make one for American Welcome because I have a lot of patriotic fabric, so I picked some out though. So I'm going to cut it up and see if I can hopefully get some time to sit down at the uh, sewing machine and sew one up. And maybe the sewing machine and I will not fight like we normally do. Maybe it'll be good. But just beautiful and great quality. Um, just love it. With that came a pattern um, by Small Town Naderworks. I have followed Jade and Kim for a while um, on their floss tube and then they started designing. So I really enjoy their things. There is a stitch along for their um, hoop series, A Year in the Hoop with Cornhusker State Stitchers. Um, so check that out. But this is the pattern that they designed exclusively for um, this bag. And then she did send some of the floss, DMC floss that is charted in the pack, as well as this is her, um, she usually sends tea as well. And then we received a needle minder, which I don't have a lot of needle minders. Um, that is super cute. Just a little Cupid needle minder, need, needle minder, try saying that 10 times fast. Um, by Stitchingly along Charisse Smith. So that is her card that came with it. So cute. And then she sent some Valentine's gummies, which I'm going to share with my children. Um, so they will very much enjoy that. So very excited to have my first bag. Cannot wait for the rest of them. Um, so every you know two months I will get one of those. So I'm excited to add bags to my collection. I'm also trying to you know clear out some bags um, by finishing whips. All right, so that is everything for stitching except for giveaways. So let's go into those. So I did have three giveaways at my last video. So the first one was hands-on design, a year of celebrations, and I'm gonna put the comment with the winner um, right here. So if you will contact me at my email address, which is listed below, and with your address, I will ship these out um, probably next week if I hear from you. I can get them to the mail mailbox. I need to get some more shipping um, envelopes. <laughs> I realize I did not have any of those. So um, once I get to the store, I will pick those up and ship them out. So hopefully next week they can go out. Um, but this one goes to Bioboy Stitcher 7320. So congratulations. And then I had Blackberry Lane Designs when Cardinals appear. This goes to N Prairie 4. Congratulations. And finally, Flea Market Flowers with the um, Floss Keep. And that goes to Cross Stitcher 2236. So congratulations to all of you. If you'll just contact me, that would be great. I do have um, some giveaways for today as well. Um, okay, so I'm getting into like the spring, summer feel. So I picked out some patterns that I had for those. And so the first one is Hello Summer by It's So Emma. So this will be number one. Oh, the rules. Please like the video, be a subscriber, leave a comment with the numbers one, two, three. I actually did not think of a question because I forgot about that. So what's your favorite, let's go that, it's market time. What's your favorite market um, release? So mine is American Welcome. I did get some other ones. There's some Manny Vidana ones that I'm excited about, her little pillows and then her Biscornos. I've never done a Biscorno, but they're really cute and I'm, I might have to do one of them. Um, there And there's some other ones in there. New York Dreamer had one. I think Jesus is the Vine um, one. Let's see. I picked up some other ones. I'll share those with you when I get them uh, in the mail, hopefully next month. All right, so don't say giveaway, don't say winner, all those words and things for the giveaways, and we're good. All right, so 18 or older, so I can mail this to you. All right, so this is uh, number one. So Hello Summer is number one. I always forget the rules and sharing those with you, but y'all are pros at these giveaways, so I'm not too worried. Um, this is by Roberis, and it's a duplicate of one that I have as well. So I'm excited to stitch this. It's um, these queen bees. So like for my August stitching, that's a little bit ahead. Summer, that's like the end of summer, but still, it's summery. Um, it does come, I don't want to show it because I'll show the pattern. Um, it comes with a little charm, if you can see it. There we go. A little bee charm to go in. Which one? Try not to show it again. I don't know which one it goes into. Anyhow, there's a charm that comes with it, so you can enjoy the charm as well. That's number two. And then for spring, one of these is spring and one of them is summer. So this is um, Kitty Me Designs. It's Little Bird Quilts. 
these birds are just so cute. We've started to get some birds. We've got some bird feeders on our deck. The kids love feeding them, love seeing them. It's so fun. So this is spring one, so that's number three. And then summer will be number four. All right, so if you um, are just here for the cross stitch and not the life update, then thank you so much for hanging out with me today and seeing all of the stitching that I um, was able to share with you. I'm so excited to um, have all of these treasures going on um, and being able to go up on my wall and having more stitching time this year. So thankful for that too. Um, for a little bit of a life update, like I mentioned, my one-year-old had her step cleft palate repair surgery. Um, it took about three-ish hours. We had to stay in the hospital overnight. Um, we had family staying with the kids, but my husband, the big kids, my husband still wanted to come home and, and spend the night with them. Um, so it was me in the hospital with her. Um, I think I got two hours of sleep that night. God bless the nurse who took her for an hour. She only wanted to be held, which I can totally understand that. Um, but then they've got rules in the hospital where you can't fall asleep holding the baby. Um, and so I, I just couldn't sleep. I had to, in fact, because I was holding her the whole time. Um, we were released the next morning though, so we didn't have to stay an extra night. Um, and it was just wonderful to come home, be in our own beds, just kind of get back into a routine. Um, we still had family helping us, which was great. And I was able to get a nap that day for them to kind of hold her for me, which was wonderful. Um, we saw the doctor's post-op one week. She was able to kind of advance her foods um, a little bit, not too much because of the stitches, but still like adding in purees and things like that, which was good because she is, you know, one year old, she loves her little purees, doesn't want to live on a liquid diet very long. Um, and then we saw the surgeon again this past week. Um, and so we were able to start her on puffs, which she is loving those. Um, starting to feed herself a little bit more. Um, we've got some more baby food that we're going to start um, trying to get her to see what she thinks. Um, more solid foods, but really soft, solid foods. She still has some stitches in the back. So anything that can poke um, is not good for her to have that in her mouth. Um, but she's free. She doesn't have to have like arm restraints. There's no concern with her putting a thumb in her mouth. Um, it did super, I don't know if it's the anesthesia or what, but it super messed up like her schedule and um, being able to self-soothe. And so we went through a week of just difficulty getting her to sleep because um, that self-soothing was her thing. Being able to put her thumb in her mouth was her thing. And then it just, you know, she's got that new, everything's new and uncomfortable. She didn't want to take a bottle for two weeks. So we were syringe giving, giving her the, bot the milk through the syringe. Um, and I think she just grew, uh, complacent in that and lazy because she didn't have to do anything uh and that, that's what the kind of what the doctor told me he's like you have to let her start using those muscles her muscles have been moved around she doesn't know how to use them um so you've got to get her to take that bottle and I think she heard the surgeon's words because she then came home and started I told her All right, we're gonna take this bottle she's one she doesn't completely understand um but she took the bottle and since then she's been taking her bottle and I'm not had to like do syringe or anything like that so oh so thankful for that um and that she's getting you know the nutrition that she needs now so we will start I think in like a month um speech therapy to kind of help her use those muscles I think it's partly feeding therapy too because she's got to learn how to do all those things that a normal one-year-old has already um they're the average not normal but the average uh one-year-old has already been able to start doing um because she was limited to purees um like stage one and two purees up until her surgery so now she's, you know, gonna have gloves off and be able to do a lot more things. So we just have to um, work with her on those things. Um, but yeah, so she's doing really well. Um, we had Valentine's Day in there, which was, you know, fun. The kids had their parties. I got all their Valentine's things beforehand, knowing that with surgery shortly before that, just wouldn't have been able to, but the kids were excited. Um, they had a great time. Um, we'll have some like Easter parties coming up at the end of the month for them, some spring break stuff, which is great. Um, I think that's pretty much it. There's not a whole lot um, else going on in our lives. Just, you know, busy with work, the kids. My husband's got some house projects. Um, he's doing built-ins in our living room, which are fabulous. Um, as you can see, I did put up some things here. It's all coming down though. Is anyone else just ready for spring? We had some great weather and then we had rain come in yesterday. So then it was cold again today. I'm just ready for spring. So I am changing out all of the winter decor, uh, which is all the, everything in the beginning of this video was the winter and Valentine's Day, but it's all coming down. My four-year-old asked me, why is the heart still up? Because Valentine's Day is gone. I'm like, I know, I just, it's still February. It goes through February, but March is tomorrow. So we are, you're bringing spring out. 
um, and brightening things up. And I'm so excited for um, warmer weather. We start soccer on Saturday. My husband is coaching both of our kids this year and I'll be team manager for my daughters um, in case he ends up having to coach at the same time and he's not able to obviously. Um, I'll be able to coach her team as the team manager because I'm certified through all of that. Um, and he can coach the boys. So we're excited for um, just spring. Hope everyone else is too. And excited for market. And I told my husband for my birthday this year that um, I wanted to be able to register for the uh, Bent Creek and Heart and Hand um, friend, friends. Oh, goodness. Really? I don't forget the name. Friend Stitch. Uh, so that goes live March 22nd. So my birthday gift is a month delayed, but then, you know, we're not going to participate in it till September, but that's okay. That's what I wanted for my birthday. And he said, easy peasy, do it. Um, but he did also make me a cookie cake and a delicious steak dinner. And the kids went out and got some, um, mugs that they found for decor, um, and things like that. So it was very sweet. Um, and we're doing my daughter's one-year-old birthday party this weekend. We wanted to wait until after surgery, um, to do that. Just, she was in isolation trying to keep her healthy. And we did like a little birthday celebration with just us. Um, but now the whole family is going to come, um, this weekend. So it'll be fun to celebrate her. She wasn't a huge fan of the cake at the time, but I'm wondering if now that she started to eat a little bit more food, she might like it a little bit better this time. So we'll see. It'll be fun. Um, she did get sick, even though we tried our best before to not get her sick. We found out she had an ear infection um, before surgery. And she went in for her one-year checkup, and the doctor was like, yeah, her ears are terrible. Um, she'd only had, like, a runny nose and was fine, and the doctor said it's pretty typical with cleft babies um, to get that because they don't have anything, you know, in between. And so it's easy for fluid to travel back to the ears. So thankfully, we got that treated. We got her cough under control because she did not need to be coughing um, during surgery, and we were able to proceed with everything. And then she had croup this past weekend, but thankfully it waited till like two weeks after surgery. So things were pretty much healed. So I mentioned that I'm ready for spring. Um, yeah, just get rid of all the sickness and bring the warm weather to where we can just be outside playing and enjoying life. Um, anyways, I've rambled on enough. Uh, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. Um, I just appreciate every one of you who stops by and hangs out with me and all the well wishes. Um, I look forward to finish uh, sharing my next video at the end of March, hopefully. Um, I've got it on my calendar, so that means it has to happen because it's scheduled into my calendar. Um, and just share what I've been working on next month. So excited for all the market releases. I'm sure everyone else is as well. And I will see you here in a month. Thanks.